Hi everyone, Stephanie here. It's the end of October. This is an important time to check in on the progress that your students have been making so far this school year. And I wanna take us back to thinking about one of the really essential early literacy skills. You are probably already thinking about reading as a language-based skill. This means students need to get to the point where they can identify and produce individual phonemes and spoken words because it's those phonemes that get mapped onto letters or strings of letters that allow students to read and write, to learn our code in the English language. So it's a really critical point in time at the beginning of the school year, whether you're working with kindergarten, first or second grade students, to pay attention to their ability to segment the sounds and spoken words. So this is a little opportunity to uh, check in on the progress of your students. And I, I'd like to focus in on particularly if your students are not making sufficient progress, if they are not at the beginning of first grade, able to segment spoken words into individual phonemes, two things I wanna encourage you to check on at this point in time. Check what the student is doing, you can learn a lot from that, and check what you are doing. So let's talk about these uh, just a bit, one by one. So in terms of checking what the student is doing, if you give the student a spoken word, not looking at the word, but say the word mop, and the student's still making errors, you might notice that most of these errors are coming in the uh, sound that the vowel makes. Sometimes students will just give you every vowel as a eh, kind of an indis indiscriminate vowel sound, eh. And if that's the response they're giving, that's a clue to you that you wanna provide more attention to what their lips and, and chin and mouth is doing when they make the vowel sounds. Other students might be uh, showing you a pattern of producing onset and rhyme, mm, op, with a word like mop. This is a good opportunity and a clue that a next step would be to teach them to separate the two phonemes in the rhyme part of the word. You might have other students who are correctly producing the individual sounds, mm, ah, p, but they are not doing it automatically or uh, quickly enough. You need to get to the point where your students can do this without thinking. That's what we're going for. So checking in either on progress monitoring, if you're using something like a cadence reading, the PSF, progress monitoring assessment, you'll see based on the marks on that scoring form, how the student is approaching the task. And if you're not using a good direct assessment like a cadence, just listening to the student's response will be helpful for knowing what to do next. The second thing I'd like to encourage you to think about if your students are struggling with segmenting phonemes is to check what you are doing and consider changing the what. You may have been working on lots of different phonological awareness skills. You may be working on skills that are too difficult. You might be working on manipulation, advanced deletion and substitution tasks with your students. Focus in on segmentation. Uh, you, you may have been doing a variety of things that include easier skills like blending and segmenting syllables. Go straight directly to phoneme segmentation right now if it's the beginning of first grade or if you're working with second graders at the beginning of the year. This is the most critical skill at the end of kindergarten that all students need to have. And you could have some first graders who haven't yet acquired this skill. So make sure that what you're working on is segmenting phonemes, that's number one. Number two, you might think about uh, changing the how of what you're teaching. Uh, if you've been doing oral activities, you might want to add in something concrete like manipulatives, either using sound box strips and markers in those boxes, or at least pounding or tapping the sounds, something to make the sounds in spoken words concrete. Make sure you're supporting these students in small groups. If you've only been doing whole group phonological awareness instruction up until this point, get those struggling students into small groups. Make sure that you are targeting segmentation during that small group time. And finally, make sure your instruction is explicit and direct. This means breaking the task down into smaller units, 
providing a direct model of what you want the student to do, guiding the student to do it with you, and once they can do it correctly, releasing them to practice on their own until they become automatic in that skill. So you'll eventually fade this support of the manipulatives, the sound box strip, tapping on fingers and so on. That's a temporary scaffold, but it might be really helpful to get students past this point where they're stuck right now. So here's what that might look like. You wanna have uh, boxes either uh, visually in front of the student on paper or on your screen. You wanna have some kind of a marker uh, chip or something that you can move into those boxes to represent the individual sounds. And you wanna provide a direct model. So you wanna show the student what you want them to do and demonstrate it by moving those markers as you make each sound in the word. So directly modeling what you want them to do. Then the we do it phase is to have the student do it with you. So the second time they are saying the sounds and moving their markers or chips while they're saying each sound. And then eventually asking the student to do it on his or her own uh, and pay attention to how they do it. If the student makes a mistake in the we do it step, so let's say the student's response to now you push the markers and say the sounds in the word mop is m, e, p. You need to respond to that with identifying that it's not quite right, repeating what you asked them to do, modeling the correct response, asking the student to say it with you again, and perhaps drawing some extra attention to the sound that was made in error and then asking the student to say it um, on their own. And if they are correct again, uh, that next time you would affirm what was correct and repeat the correct response. This kind of a corrective feedback cycle is really an important part of your small group explicit instruction. So if this doesn't sound like the way that you've been teaching segmentation, these might be some things to consider. I also want you to think about perhaps changing how much instruction students are receiving. You can increase their number of instructional uh, opportunities to respond by decreasing the size of the group that they're in. You can increase their number of practice opportunities by distributing the practice throughout the day for the student. And you might think about increasing the amount of time, either providing more minutes per small group session or providing small group instruction more days of the week. So perhaps you've been meeting with that student three times a week. You might think about increasing that to four or five. So hopefully this gives you a few things to think about and consider in terms of the student's behavior, what they're doing when you ask them to segment phonemes, and your behavior, how you have been teaching the student to segment phonemes. This is a really critical point in time and a critical skill for first graders, and a real sense of urgency should be applied if you're working with students who are beyond the beginning of first grade. And if you're working with kindergartners, this might give you some things to think about as you're moving into the middle of the school year. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to add comments below this video.